Before we get started to configure segment routing over the MPLS network, I have to check the initial configuration file for PE1 and P2. We will check each point in the configuration file one by one. The configuration file of P1 is similar to P2 and the configuration file of PE2 is similar to PE1. Let's get started to check the configuration file of PE1. Display current configuration. We can find here that there is a VPN instance named as customer A and it has the configuration with root distinguisher and root target import and export. It also has the MPLS globally configured and MPLS LSR ID 1.1.1.1 which is the loopback IP address loopback 0 for PE1 as we will see later. We can find here the interfaces connected to routers in the MPLS SR domain interface 100 and interface 101 as in the description 100 to P1 and 101 to P2. Each interface is configured with IP address only. Another interface which is 102 this is the service interface which is connected to CE1 router as in the description interface 102 connected to CE1 we can see that in the topology the interface 102 is binded to the VPN instance configured above which is customer A and an IP address given to the service interface which is connected to the CE1 router which is the router located at the customer site Site 1. We can find here the interface loopback 0 configured with an IP address 1.1.1.1, which is the MPLS LSR ID configured above. We can find also the configuration for the BGP process, BGP1, and the router ID. The P router is 3.3.3.3, which is the loopback IP address configured at PE2. It's disabled from the IPv4 family Unicast and enabled in the IPv4 family VBMv4. This is to be able to send the customer routes of customer A between PEs, PE1 and PE2. And also inside the IPv4 family VBN instance customer A, we used the command import route direct. The direct link between PE1 and CE1 can be advertised and imported in the BGB process at PE1 and advertised to PE2. So the routing table of VPN instance customer A at PE2 can receive the direct link between PE1 and CE1. And of course, we do same at PE2 side. We import root direct for the customer service interface. So this interface can be announced and received at PE1. Also, this is the OSPF configuration, OSPF1 and area 0 and we defined all the interfaces that will be advertised and receive OSPF updates. We defined the interface between PE1 and P1 and we defined the interface between PE1 and P2 and we defined the loopback interface. So the loopback interface configured locally at PE1 can be advertised in the OSPF updates to other routers in the MPLS SR domain. That was the initial configuration file for PE1. Let's switch now to the initial configuration file of P2. Display current configuration. We don't have here any VPN instances. We are in the transit router or the core router of the MPLS SR domain. The MPLS configuration enabled globally and the MPLS LSR ID here is 4.4.4.4 which is the IP address of the loopback 0 interface of this router router P2. We will see the configuration of the loopback interface 0 later. We can also see the interfaces of P2. We have interface 100 and interface 101 and finally interface 102. The interfaces here in the topology P1. It has interface 100 connected to P2, 101 connected to PE1 and finally 102 is connected to PE2. After that, we have the interface loopback 0 here is configured with 4.4.4.4. This is the IP address of the loopback 0 and is configured as the MPLS LSR ID as seen above. And the OSPF 
process one with area zero and the network interfaces that will send and receive OSPF updates. We have the three interfaces of P2 and the low back interface. Back again to the PE1 router, we can check the routing table of customer A, display, BGB, VPN V4, VPN instance, test A, routing table. We can see that there is a network coming, it's 40.4.4.0 slash 30 and the next hope is 3.3.3.3. This next hope is the low back IP address of PE2. We received the customer route from PE2 but it's not considered as best route. The issue here is that PE1 doesn't have a label switch path to PE2. This is because we don't configure here LDB or RSVP. Now we are going to configure segment routing to replace LDB or RSVP. In this lab we will configure segment routing BE or best effort which will replace the LDB. After we configure the segment routing there will be a segment routing path between PE1 and PE2 and the customer route will be accepted. We will check now how to configure the segment routing. Let's get started now with the required configuration for segment routing. We go to the system view of PE1 and we add command segment routing. This is at the global mode or at the system view mode. Quit and now we have to configure the OSPF with segment routing. The OSPF will be responsible to send all the segment routing information, the segment routing label, segment routing global block to all SR routers. OSPF1. This is our OSPF process configured locally on the router. I'll add command opaco capability enable, which will add the opaco capability for the OSPF. This is for the extensions added for the OSPF that will be able to send the segment routing information to other routers. After that, I'll add command segment routing MPLS. This is under the OSPF view OSPF1. Next is to define the segment routing global block using common segment routing global block and we define the global block here as 16,000 to 23,000. Next is to enable the FRR inside the OSPF and inside the FRR OSPF view we add command loop free alternate and next command is TI-LFE enable. Quit from the FRR view and then quit from the OSPF view. Now we configured the OSPF with OPECO capability and segment routing MPLS, segment routing global block and the TI LFA. This is to find a loop free alternate path in case main path lost, the backup path can be used instantly to quickly restore the traffic. Finally, at the interface loopback zero of PE1, we will define the node SID or the prefix SID. Inside interface loopback 0, this is an interface that is configured with 1.1.1.1, which is the MPLS LSR ID. We are going to add command OSPF prefix SID, and after the prefix SID, we have two options absolute or index. Absolute, it means that I am going to set an absolute value for the node SID starting from this range from 16,000. We have reserved it from 16,000 to 23,000. So we can choose any value from this range or we can use command index. Index, it's a value which is the offset, offset from the defined range of the global block. For PE1, if I defined index 10 for the OSPF prefix SID, the node SID or the prefix SID for PE1 will be 16,000 and 10. This is the offset. Now we add command commit to apply the above changes and let's switch now to the P2 router to apply the required configuration for the segment routing, which is quite similar to the configuration of PE1. System view mode, segment routing at the system view mode, quit and OSPF1, opaco capability enable, segment routing MPLS, segment routing global block 16,000 to 23,000, 
F R R loop free alternate T I dash L F A enable and then quit quit again to quit from the OSPF the first quit to quit from the F R R and the second quit is to quit from the OSPF and finally at interface loop back zero we will define the node SID or the prefix SID with command OSPF prefix SID index 40 the node SID will be 16,040 this is for the loopback 0 of P2 avoid to use the same index done for PE1 we don't use index 10 for P2 if we used index 10 for P2 node SID will be 16,010 the node SID of P2 which is same as PE1 commit to apply changes that's what's required for the segment routing configuration at PE1 and P2 same configuration will be done for P1 and PE2 offline to save video time now let's get back to PE1 router and we can check the segment routing paths or the segment routing LSP paths are established or not with command display segment routing prefix MPLS forwarding so for now we can see that the loopback 1.1.1.1 which is configured locally at PE1 this is why the interface is loopback 0 and the label for it is 16010 and the out label is null because it's already added locally at PE1 we can find the network 3.3.3.3 which is defined at PE2 this is a loopback address of PE2 and we have here two paths for this network two segment routing paths and the label is 16,030 this is the label at PE1 and the out label is 16,030 because we have the same segment routing global block configured at P1 and at P2 two paths for this network from P1 and from P2 because we have the same cost here for this network we can check that display IP routing table network 3.3.3.3 .3 .3 .3 .3. We can find that the OSPF selects two paths for this network from next hope 10.21.21.2, which is P2, and 10.11.11.2, which is P1, 100, and 101. We can check the configuration at PE2. Display current configuration, interface loopback 0, and we can find here that the index is. 30 this is why the label assigned for the node segment id for pe2 is 16030 and we have one segment routing path one for p1 and one for p2 and this is the label for p1 is 16020 and for p2 is 16040 we can also check the adjacency sid using command display segment routing adjacency mpls forwarding this are the labels generated dynamically with a IGP or SPF protocol for the links we have from PE1 which is for 100 and for 101 at P2 we can also check the loop free alternate paths using command display OSPF segment routing routing we can find here that P2 has a destination 1.1.1.1 this is PE1 and it can reach PE1 via the direct next hope 10.21.21.1 from interface ethernet 101 the backup is from interface 100 to p1 this is the backup path or the backup interface to get to pe1 the backup next hope is from interface 100 and the backup type is TILFA. The TILFA enabled on the OSPF selected a loop free alternate backup path to via P1. This path is standby and ready to be used in case there is a failure at the main link or at the main next hope. Now we can ping the segment routing LSP path between PE1 and PE2. PE2 IP address is 3.3.3.3 .3 from PE1 I'm going to ping the segment routing LSP path to PE2 using command ping LSP segment routing IP 3.3.3.3 and the subnet mask is 32 version draft 2 
we can receive reply from PE2 normally. Now it's time to check the VPN customer route received from PE2. Display BGP VPN V4 VPN instance and the VPN instance name is customer A and the keyword routing table. We can find that the routing table of the VPN instance customer A accepted the network 40.4.4.0 at PE1. We can ping minus VPN instance customer A, the source customer interface from PE1, which is 30.3.3.1 as a source, and the destination is 40.4.4.1. We can receive reply from PE2 customer traffic is joined the segment routing LSP path established between PE1 and PE2.